Hi Ashutosh Tripathi, once again welcome you to my channel learn.com and today we are going to continue with the topic clauses which we started last week. So in my last video I just gave an introduction lecture regarding clauses that what clauses are, what are its types and the different terminologies related to clauses like coordinators, subordinators, dependent, independent, principal and several others. But today in this topic we are going to deal with the dependent clauses that is as I, as I told you in the last video that the dependent or the subordinate clauses are of three types. They can be of three types depending on the function they perform. They can be of adject they can be an adjective clause, they can be noun clause and they can be adverb clause. So in today's video I am going to take up adjective clause. So let's begin with the topic. Move. Moving on to the first slide. Yes. Let us first try to define what an adjective clause is. So, as you can see on your screen, I have mentioned a clause that acts as an adjective or does the work of an adjective in a sentence is known as adjective clause. So, as you might have learned in your low classes, the definition of adjective, what an adjective is. So, an adjective, as you know, is a describing word. It tries to describe a noun or a pronoun. Similarly, adjective clause also describes a noun or a pronoun. That is why I have mentioned that it does the work of an adjective in a sentence. So both adjective and adjective clause perform the same function of describing the noun. Now before I take on the examples, let me put before you some important points which you should always keep in mind regarding the adjective clauses. These three points are very important. You should always keep in mind while identifying the adjective clauses. The very first point is an adjective clause usually describes a noun and answers the question which one. So when we will frame a question along with the noun with the word which then we'll get the adjective clause as the answers. So when I'll take up the examples I'll try to make you understand this thing how to frame the question and how to get the answer. Just to keep in the mind that when we we'll frame the question using the word which, we will get the adjective clause as the answer. The second point, adjective clause is normally introduced by the words who, whose, whom for living beings, which for non-living and animals and that can be used for both. So these are the two points. The last and the most important point is the adjective clause should be placed as close as possible to the noun it describes. The effort should be to place it next to the noun it describes. So this is the most important point which you should always keep in mind. That while framing an adjective clause, this adjective clause should always come next to the noun it is describing. Otherwise it might create some confusion that I will take later on. I'll take certain examples to tell you how it will create different meaning if it is not properly used. That is why in the third point I've mentioned that the clause or the adjective clause should be placed as close as possible to the noun it describes. Means the effort should be made to place it as close as possible to the noun it describes. But the if possible it should be always placed next to the noun it describes. Like in the following three examples as you can I have put all the three adjective clauses next to the noun they are describing. So for your convenience, I have used different colors in, for, in writing. So the nouns are in orange color, the adjective clauses are in yellow color. So in the first example, my uncle who owns a shop has offered me a job. Now here, noun is uncle. An adjective clause is who owns a shop. Now coming back to the first point that is this one how to frame the question which one and get the answer as subordinate clause. Now when we consider this example and we ask a question that which uncle which uncle so we get the answer who owns a shop. So in this example the main clause is my uncle has offered me a job. This is the main clause. 
and who owns a shop is the subordinate clause subordinate clause of adjective clause <coughs> again we if we frame a question which uncle we get the answer who owns a shop similarly here my spectacles which i only use for reading are being repaired so when we ask the question here which spectacles which spectacles the answer will be obviously which i only use for reading the main clause is my spectacles are being repaired and the subordinate clause of adjective is which i only use for reading the leader whom everyone trusted turned out to be a thief now leader whom everyone trusted adjective clause which leader when we ask the question which leader we get the answer whom everyone trusted so in this way you can identify using the question word which along with the noun along with the noun if you put the question which question word which you'll get the answer as adjective clause here the main clause is the leader turned out to be a thief is principal clause or main clause and whom everyone trusted subordinate adjective clause in all the three examples if you ask the question which along with the noun you get the subordinate clause as the answers so this is the way how you can identify whether it is an adjective clause the third point which i told you is that the adjective clause should be placed next to the noun it describes now why this is important you see to avoid confusion an adjective clause should come right after its antecedents now antecedents is the noun it describes here these are antecedents the noun which are being described are also known as antecedents now let us consider a particular example which may which will make it clear why it is necessary to put the adjective clause next to the noun it describes consider this example he left the gift in his friend's car that he had just bought he left the gift in his friend's car that he had just bought now here the adjective clause or the subordinate adjective clause is that he had just bought but it is not clear whether this adjective clause is defining car or it is defining gift confusion i mentioned here also not clear whether the adjective clause modifies car or gift because car is also a noun gift is also a noun it's not clear this adjective clause is defining which noun so corrected form is he left the gift that he had just bought in his friend's car so now it is clear that the adjective clause is describing the noun gift because it is used just after the noun that is why it becomes important to use the adjective clause immediately after the noun which it describes the adjective clause clearly modifies the gift here let's take on a few more examples scientists who study fossils are called paleontologists this is the first example scientists are noun who study fossils subordinate adjective clause and scientists are called paleontologists these are this is the main clause this is adjective clause the government awards large contracts each year to scientists who do research for the government now what i wish to tell you from these two examples is that in both the examples you can see the clause comes immediately after the antecedent as told before that the clause adjective clause will come immediately after the noun or the antecedent irrespective of the position of the noun in the sentence means it is not necessary that the noun which should come in the beginning only no it can come at anywhere in the sentence what is important is that the noun should always be followed by the adjective clause to avoid the confusion i think it's clear now so one last thing i'm going to tell you something extra about adjective clause that these adjective clauses <coughs> can be of two types that is defining and non defining now this might be something new for you uh consider these two examples 
as you can see on your screen, first few examples. My brother who lives in Mumbai writes every week. My brother John who lives in Mumbai writes every week. Now these both the examples. We have subordinate adjective clause. So what's the difference? The difference lies that one of them is defining and the other is non-defining. Now how to identify it? Now the first example is a defining adjective clause. That is, it answers the question which one. When we answer the question which brother, we get the answer who lives in Mumbai. Right? In the first example, following the rule which I told you that when we answer, when we frame the question using the question word which, and we ask which brother, we get the answer who lives in Mumbai. That is, it answers the question, which one? So the sentence means that the speaker has several brothers. He has many brothers. And one of them writes every week. So, the, so when we ask the question, which one? We get the answer, the one who lives in Mumbai. So the defining relative clauses gives necessary information to define or identify the person or thing we are talking about. But in the second example, the adjective clause is used in a different way. The clause does not tell us which brother. Because here we cannot ask which brother. Because it is already given. The name is already given. John. Right? The clause does not tell us which brother. For we already know it. It is John. The clause simply tells us more about the brother. That is, he lives in Mumbai. It is said to be non-defining adjective clause. Now these non-defining adjective clauses are also known as non-restrictive clauses. Sometimes you might guess this term non-restrictive. That is they provide unnecessary extra information. So here are certain examples I have given. These two examples are of defining clauses. These two are of non-defining clauses. Now, one very important point regarding the non-defining clauses. I've mentioned in the brackets here that all non-defining clauses are marked off from the rest of the sentence by commas. And this is very important because it is the only way in which we can see the difference. So, if you want to differentiate between a defining clause and non-defining clause, very easy. The non-defining adjective clauses are always marked off with commas. Wherever you will find non-defining clauses. See here also. They are marked off with commas. While in defining clauses, they are not used. They are not marked off with comma. But in non-defining, they are marked off with the comma. So I think you have understood the topic very well. Hope you like the video. And if you do so, please don't forget to share and subscribe the channel. Thank you for watching. Have a